So Godzilla Minus One has just hit a new rare milestone. It now has surpassed the Best Picture Oscar winner Parasite. And this would put it in the top three highest earning non-English films in US box office history. And the record is in big part thanks to the new special black and white recut of the film titled Godzilla Minus One Minus Color. It just hit theaters this past Friday for a one week limited showing. The new version added $2.6 million to the film's American sum. And this was its highest weekend since New Year's. It now brings it to $55 million. This now passes the $53.3 million that Parasite made in 2020. And with just another $2.2 million, that would give Godzilla Minus One the number two spot, surpassing the 1997 film Life is Beautiful. And this would make it sit behind Crouching Tiger Hidden Dragon, which made $128 million. So I was actually lucky enough to catch Godzilla Minus One Minus Color. I got to see it at this really old theater by me. And it really was just like traveling back in time, because there's not really too many old theaters like that anymore. You know, the kind with the overhang and it just shows the movie posters and the ticket booth. And also just inside of it, I think it used to be a playhouse way back. And it just had that really old look. And even the movie screen was so old that it had folds in it. But it really worked. It was perfect for a monster movie in black and white. And I was just thankful for it all. And the guy who owned the theater is actually just really nice. You know, we talked movies, and he even thanked me for just coming out and supporting Godzilla. And he was real excited to have just gotten a print of this film. And actually, originally, Godzilla Minus One Minus Color was only going to be shown in Japan. But because of how just well it performs, that's what made them bring it to the US. And I'm just glad we were able to get the black and white version here, and I was able to see it in the movies. Because the black and white really just feels natural for this movie. And I could just picture them originally wanting to show it in this way. But they probably didn't because they didn't want to risk just alienating people. Unlike me, there is people who don't like watching movies in black and white. But when you just look at the time period that this film takes place in, it just fits really well. And just with the added bonus of seeing it at an old theater, again, it was just perfect. It was just such a great experience. And it makes the movie almost look like old World War II footage. And you feel like you're just watching something from that time period. To me, it felt like an Akira Kurosawa film, which I'm a big fan of. But this version actually does feel different from the color version. It's got more of a haunting, dark feel to it. And especially the scenes of wreckage, it honestly looked like Hiroshima photos that were taken after the bomb, and that's kind of terrifying. But this version's biggest benefit is just how scary it makes Godzilla now. And there were moments I was actually creeped out that I wasn't with the color version, just the way he appeared. It kind of just caught me off guard. And even just his movements, they actually look more natural now for some reason. And Godzilla now just feels more like a monster. And I kind of like it. I like how mean he is. I mean, this is the same exact movie as the color version. There's nothing changed, no deleted scenes. Just the presentation actually changes it. And this version definitely feels more like a horror movie. In fact, I will now classify it that way. And this is definitely the scariest Godzilla's ever been. And I kind of just get chills now just thinking about it. And now even the scenes that Godzilla isn't in, you can feel his presence. There really is something about black and white. It just gives you that creepy feeling. I feel like shows like The Twilight Zone, they would not be as effective if they had it in color. That's kind of part of their atmosphere and it really works. And it really changes scenes. And especially just a scene where Noriko's looking at Godzilla through the window. That scene is actually scary now. It made me just think about how terrifying it would be to see this giant thing just walking towards you. I mean, what would you do? There's nowhere to go, you can't really hide. 
And also just the Odo Island scene in the beginning, I feel like that especially benefited from the black and white. Because that was already a dark scene, but now it's even darker and Godzilla just looks like this shadow. And it's really just a callback to that old 50s monster movie. The movies with the giant beasts, and they were in black and white usually. And it really is a genre in itself. And this is that modern version of that. And actually someone joked in the comments that they should have added CGI strings on the planes. That would have been a nice touch. But the best is someone joked that they should add Raymond Burr to just the American version. That would be a hilarious and good callback. Now he's making his way toward the city's main line of defense. I know what they were going with with this version. They wanted to resemble the original 1954 film. And actually Minus One was already in a way a remake of that original Godzilla. And there's a good reason why most fans call that one the greatest. You usually see that on everyone's top 10 lists. And this was before Godzilla Minus One came out. Minus One now is just everyone's favorite. But the original holds up so well after 70 years because the black and white actually hides the flaws and it makes it better and more timeless. And especially stuff like the film grain in it. It makes Godzilla look more real because it's like you're watching just old footage of something terrifying. Something during World War II where all this messed up stuff was happening. And when you watch that movie even now, it just feels so bleak and dark. That film will forever be timeless. But Godzilla Minus One Minus Color has that same dark feeling that the original had. And even just the way Godzilla appears as like this dark shadow. When I was watching it, it really just reminded me of the original. And this version actually hides the CGI better. And the effects were already just expertly done. In fact, I believe the movie was nominated for an Academy Award. But the movie also used a lot of practical effects. The scene where we see Godzilla just destroying the Dieter, that was an actual model that they created. And they just put the CGI in front of it and then destroyed it. But that's how CGI should be handled. Unfortunately, filmmakers use it way more than they should, and it's almost like they don't even want to try anymore. But I really didn't notice the CGI in this new black and white version. Now it fully masks it, and you feel like you're watching old footage of an actual monster. Godzilla just looks more real now. And this is going to be the version that's going to hold up after 20 years. Unfortunately, the color version has more of a shelf life. It's not going to look as good in time. And when I decide to watch this movie at home on a less impressive television, I don't have a home theater, I'm going to put the black and white version in. It's going to be more effective. And maybe I'm just biased. I know that not everyone likes movies in black and white, but I actually always like the look of them. Especially those old Akira Kurosawa films. They just look amazing to me. There's really something about them. They just have a great atmosphere to them. And Kurosawa must have loved black and white too, because he continued to make them even after movies were in color. And they didn't just flip a switch to make this movie into black and white. They actually went through each scene and each frame, and they carefully made sure that it worked. They made sure the contrast looked right, and that you could see everything. And some scenes, they even had to mess with the lighting. Like when Godzilla is just charging up, they lightened each spine so that we'd see it. So this wasn't just a gimmick, they really did believe in the vision. And I was actually wondering how they were going to do this, because movies that are in black and white, sometimes they're filmed that way knowing the limitation. For example, the film Rashomon, in order to see the rain, they actually put black dye in it. And I almost kind of wish that this was the first way I saw this film. I saw someone say in the comments that they first saw it that way, and they don't want to see it any other way. And I just wonder what that would be like. But also other stuff, like just hearing the original Godzilla theme in black and white. And I don't know if this is going to be playing in theaters for longer than a week. It's actually amazing that this movie's still playing two months after releasing. It was originally only supposed to play for two weeks. 
I believe it's because of all of us who just went out and saw it multiple times. I have people telling me in the comments they saw it 21 times. And honestly, I believe them. I wouldn't be surprised if they just kept this movie in theaters for months. But this is how movies used to be. They used to be an event. And Godzilla Minus One is that event in our lifetime. It's the first time I've seen anything like it. And it's really an experience of its own. And just being honest, no matter how many times I see this film, I'm always taken on an emotional roller coaster. And each time it's been a different experience. It's never the same movie. And that's because I noticed something different each time. And I noticed that this time it wasn't just the big scenes that were getting to me. It was the smaller moments. And it just amazes me how much emotion is packed into this one two hour movie. There's really not a scene wasted. And this time I actually noticed a different message. More than once it's mentioned that people do things that they don't want to do. But they do it because someone has to do it. And that was really the mentality for the war. And actually my grandfather fall in the Pacific War. And when I watched this movie this time, I was just tearing up thinking about him. I just pictured him in this time period and how rough it was. And these great men didn't fight for themselves. They fought for us. They fought so that we wouldn't have to. And that's how war should be. It was necessary, but it shouldn't be anymore. It's time now to live. And that's the message of the film, to live. And it's weird because not many Japanese movies have that kind of hopeful message. And that's why this movie just stands out so much. It's a really strong, hopeful message. And we need that. Guys, it's just been a great time. And I've just been loving all of your comments, your excitement for this movie. It's been amazing. And I'm just glad that I'm not alone. Not everyone views movies like we do. They don't take it as serious. But we're able to get the most out of something that we love. And not everyone can do that. And that's a beautiful thing. And I can't wait to just pre-order a 4K copy of this film. And they really should just include both versions. Because even though I prefer the minus color, I still might be in the mood for the color version. They put a lot of good colors in that film. Especially just if I want to watch it with someone who doesn't really care for black and white. It's a nice option. And in the meantime, I honestly might see this film again if it's still playing. We'll see. And if they decide to do something else, a different visual effects, I'll be glad to see it. Because this was a new experience. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought in the comments. Do you prefer the color version or the minus color? And like always, thanks for watching.